If you want to grow the lushest garden that you've ever grown with the most productivity, you should get one of these a soil test. Now there seems to be a lot of resistance in the gardening community to getting a soil test for your garden. And I think most of this is because people think it's difficult. People think it's going to take a lot of time, it's going to be laborious, it's going to be costly, but that couldn't be further from the truth. It's relatively cheap, it takes about 15 minutes to do if you know how to do it, and most importantly, the results are super valuable. Now my goal in this video will be to convince you to get a soil test if you've never had it done. I promise you that getting the results back in the mail will be very exciting. You'll be thrilled to go out into the garden with knowledge about what's going on in your garden and the tools to improve it. So what is a soil test? Essentially, you're sending away a sample of your soil in your raised beds or in your in-ground garden beds off to a place where they can test that soil for various things. Soil testing is not for container gardening. Potting mix is not real soil. So you'll learn about the nutrient content in your soil, whether they are in the optimal range for growing the plants you wanna grow. You'll learn about the acidity of your soil, which can greatly impact how well those nutrients are taken into plants. You can also test for things like organic matter and the texture of your soil so you know the type of soil that's in your backyard. From there, instead of going out and blindly dumping all-purpose fertilizer on your garden beds, you can go out with an exact plan, knowing exactly how much of which nutrients are needed. Before I get into it, please like this video and subscribe to Geeky Greenhouse for more content like this. And if you happen to be growing tomatoes this year, we have a free tomato growing ebook to help you grow lush, productive tomatoes from seed to harvest. So if you're interested in that, I'll leave a link in the description below. Okay, so where can you get your soil tested and how do you do it? We get our soil tested locally and I recommend you do the same. Look locally for an institution that tests soil for all of these things. I guarantee you'll find something that's pretty close. You can send your soil samples to Yukon as well if you want, even if you live in California. However, there may be an additional fee for disposing of that soil because of regulations based on pathogens and pests. I'll leave a couple of links down below where you can send your soil, but again, I recommend finding a local place. Then it comes time to actually collect your soil sample. How do you collect soil to be tested? It's really simple and the soil testing facility will tell you exactly what you need to do, but essentially the process goes like this. First of all, choose a site that you're gonna be testing. If you're testing in multiple locations, maybe you have a raised bed garden and then a flower garden on the other side of your yard, it's recommended that you take samples from those distinct locations and get them tested separately. But as an example, for our raised garden beds where we grow primarily vegetables, it's recommended to collect at least six or seven different samples from different areas in your raised beds to get a good picture of the soil as a whole. We dug down about six inches down below the surface and collected a little bit of soil from about eight different areas in the garden, placing each of them into a plastic baggie. Mix the soil up really well to make sure that it is well incorporated and then label the sample. Place the samples in a shipping box along with any forms and payment that are required for the sample to be tested. Then ship it off and wait for your results to arrive, usually within about two to three weeks, depending on how busy the laboratories are. It may sound like a lot, but really it only takes a matter of 15 to 20 minutes at most. We sampled two areas in our yard, our raised garden beds, and then our orchard slash flower beds, and we got our results back in about two and a half weeks. So your test results arrive, and you might be a little bit confused by the results. So how do you interpret these and put this information to use in the garden? Well, right up front on the results, you should have some information on the levels of primary nutrients in your soil. But before we get into those, you might wonder why nitrogen was not tested for. Nitrogen is one of the most important nutrients in the soil, so why don't they tell you how much is in your soil? Well, the reason is that nitrogen easily washes out of the soil when it rains, especially over the winter when a lot of precipitation falls, it leaches away. And you can basically assume that your soil doesn't have enough nitrogen to grow your garden again. And it should be added by default in the spring. And usually they'll give some recommendations on roughly how much nitrogen to add along with any other amendments. But for us, we can see that we have plenty of calcium, a little bit too much magnesium, a little bit too much phosphorus, but not enough potassium in our raised beds. So that's the first indicator that we need to add something to the garden. We need to add potassium, but let's look at the other results before we get to that. We also learned our soil's pH or its acidity is at 6.3, so mildly acidic, 
which is pretty good for growing vegetables, but the target pH is around 6.6 .6 for garden vegetables, so we'll want to move that number up a little bit. We can also see the results of micronutrients like boron, copper, iron, manganese, zinc, and sulfur, and all of these roughly fall into the expected range in our area. So hopefully you can start to see the benefit of having this information. Now, instead of going out and applying a bunch of all-purpose fertilizer, hoping that we get all the nutrients we need, we can go in with selective amendments that only add what is lacking. To illustrate this perfectly, our other test from our orchard area came back lacking calcium and phosphorus, but having plenty of potassium and magnesium. So the way we treat these two areas will be completely different when it comes to amendments and fertilizers going into the spring. Now there are some additional tests you can have done if you wanna learn even more about your soil, such as a textural analysis, which we had done on one of our areas to find out the sand, silt, and clay levels of our soil. We have very sandy soil. We have 74% sand, 20% silt, and only 5% clay. This is really helpful to know because in our case, we have sandy soil, which drains really well. However, it does not hold on to water or nutrients all that well. On the flip side, you might have very clay rich soil, which does a really good job of retaining nutrients and feeding those nutrients to your plants, but it does not drain very well, which may lead to issues with overwatering. And the other test we had done is how much organic matter is in our soil. Organic matter is a great measure of how healthy your soil is. Having organic matter in the soil is essential to feed microbes and to foster an overall resilient soil ecosystem. And our organic matter came back at about 4%, which is actually pretty good. So going back to the first test, what are we doing to this soil? Well, we're gonna use limestone to increase the pH slightly at the recommended rate of 50 pounds per thousand square feet. Our phosphorus level is above optimum and you can actually have too much phosphorus in your soil. And I wanna make sure that I don't add any phosphorus to our raised beds. As for fertilizer, we only wanna add nitrogen and potassium. We don't wanna add any phosphorus, any calcium, or any magnesium. For nitrogen, we have blood meal, which adds nitrogen without any phosphorus or potassium. And for potassium, we have muriate of potash, which is a 0060, so no nitrogen, no phosphorus, just potassium. Now there are various amendments that you can use and depending on your results, you may need to add any of these nutrients. So I'll give a few examples here. For nitrogen, you can use blood meal. For phosphorus, you can use bone meal or superphosphate. For potassium, you can use potash or langbionite for an organic option. And for calcium, you can use bone meal, but it also contains nitrogen and phosphorus. So for pure calcium, you can use gypsum. There'll be links down in the description for some of our recommended amendments for all of the different nutrients that might be needed in your garden. Now, when it comes to measuring out all of your amendments, you wanna make sure you use the right quantity of each amendment and it differs based on the concentration of the nutrients. But to make things easier, I'll leave a link to a conversion chart to help you convert cups to pounds based on what amendments you're using. One other thing to consider is when you apply these amendments. The best time of year to do this is actually in late summer or late winter, especially if you're using organic amendments which need time to be broken down. If you wanna go the synthetic route and use faster acting fertilizers, which are immediately available to your plants, you can do that right before planting out, just a week or two before transplanting your plants into the garden. So doing this just one time is so much more valuable than never doing it. You don't have to retest, but if you wanna test again, it's recommended that you get your soil tested every three years or so, just to see how things may have changed based on environmental factors, how you've been treating your soil, what plants you've grown in that soil, and what amendments you've added throughout the years. And if you wanna improve your soil over time, you wanna make sure that you add some organic matter every year. Don't go too heavily on it because even organic matter like compost or manure can lead to an overabundance of nutrients. So I hope I've convinced you to at least consider testing your soil. You really only need to do it one time and then forget about it for a few years. You'll be glad you did. Getting the results is super exciting. It makes you thrilled to get out into the garden with added knowledge about what's needed. I hope you have an amazing lush garden this year and thanks for watching Geeky Greenhouse.